Hey, everybody. Apple did something over the past month that shows that they, at the very least, are trying to position themselves as a company that genuinely cares about user privacy and protecting you from people who want to mine every single last action you do, every single email you send, every single uh, piece of data that you put into an app to try to find out more about you and sell it to advertisers. And that has to do with these login buttons. So let's say you go to any sort of independent blog to comment, you want to go to Grubhub to order some food, and typically, you'll have to register. And registering is a pain in the ass. You got to fill out, you have to make a password. Typically, your password has to have a certain level of security to it. So you may not be able to use a password that you're used to because it's got this many symbols and that many numbers and this many capitalized letters. You're going to have to go to your email and wait for the verification email, click it and all this other horse crap. And it's much easier to simply continue with Google or continue with Facebook here, which is what you can do if you have a Google, Gmail or a Facebook account. So you have a Gmail or a Facebook account that you're already logged into, you just click this button and bam, you're logged into a website. And Apple is going to be doing that now with a login with Apple button. So they're going to have a login with Apple button, but it's not going to send your email or your personal data to the application. It's going to come up with some sort of username, password, whatever, and it's going to use this as your email or your username. So the app developer uh, is not going to have your email, because, you know, my email, it's, anybody can figure out my, who I am from my email. It's firstname.lastname at domainname.com, whereas this, you, you're not going to find out what my name is from this. And one of the things that's going to help this along is that if you have a login with Facebook or login with Google button in your app, Apple is going to force the developer to put their button there, and they can do that because it's their platform. And if the, the app developer says, well, I don't want to do that, Apple will say, okay, enjoy being on the Play Store where people are much less likely to pay for apps. It's, uh, Apple is able to strong arm the app developers in that way, in a way that I think is positive by saying, if you want to be on our platform where people are more likely to pay more money for apps than other platforms, you're going to play by a rule that helps user privacy. This is pretty cool. So there are some criticisms of this. One of them comes from a uh, Google a Google uh, employee here, and th there was an interview uh, with The Verge that I'll link below, and it says over here, and he's comparing it to the login with Google button, he says, the current product, I haven't seen how it will be built, but it sounds like they will log the moment as well, and then also every email that's ever sent by that company, which sounds a lot more invasive. So the Google individuals bring up a, a good point. If the email is going to be forwarded to Apple, and every single communication from the app developer to the end user is going to go through Apple's server, isn't that more invasive? Because then Apple's going to potentially have access to every single email you sent. Good point. However, most people are using this continue with Google button to sign in with their Gmail. And your Gmail account is logged by Google. Not only is it logged by Google, it is also mined by Google's computers to find as much information as, on you as possible so that they could build a profile on you so that they can advertise to you. Ever since Gmail was introduced 15 years ago in 2004, it has been reading through your email so that it could get as much information on you as possible so that they could advertise to you. So I don't understand how this criticism that this Google employee has of the Apple implementation is a valid criticism given that their platform is doing all of that and worse. But it is something to consider. It, now, when he says that sounds invasive, I'd understand it. A lot more invasive? Not really. And this is something that Apple's been doing for years, and it's something that they started doing a few years ago. There was a bunch of digital marketing and advertising organizations that got really pissed off at Apple for something they did in Safari that goes above my head, but the way that Safari is dealing with cookies, Apple also has this intelligent tracking prevention thing, which is designed to keep websites, to keep cookies from being able to get as much information on users as possible, and this dates all the way back to 2017. I think this is pretty cool. Apple is doing something that's smart when it comes to being a new business, which is figuring out what market niches are not being served to the standard that they should be served, or what market niches exist that nobody is serving, and then saying, hey, I've got an answer for you. And one of them is that, hey, we're going to be the company that actually cares about privacy. Not only are we not going to steal your data, we are going to create a platform that actively acts as a thorn in the side of digital marketers and advertisers that would want to take your data, that would want to mine you for every single bit that they can, that want to have 95-page EULAs in legalese that you're never going to be able to, you're never going to read, and that you're never going to have the time to read, that will legally remove liability from them taking every single last bit of data from you. 
And this is a good thing, especially Apple's not a new business. They have an established reputation. And this is something that I think that other companies should should consider. And you know, there's a reason that Apple would be able to do this. And, you know, it's because people simply don't trust companies like Google and Facebook when it comes to their data. You know, I talked about it in this video over here where I was using, uh, I was just logging into this one th th link that somebody had sent in my comment section about checking out all your, all your user data. Data, and I found five to seven years of voice to text recordings from my phone that I had not opted into. So I started using Android in 2010. And around 2012 is when I got opted in how the hell this happened, I don't know, because I did not opt in to every single little piece of data being saved, every single thing I had said, in using Google voice to text was archived, the recordings were archived, they were all transcribed, tied to my Gmail account and easily searchable so that anybody who had ever hacked my Gmail account could see what apps I opened at four in the morning, when I was using what application, what I said to what person and be able to download audio clips. Absolutely disgusting. So Apple would be positioning themselves as a company that cares about your privacy and user data, which I think is a good thing. And this is a sales pitch that I would damn near almost work on me, which is, listen, our products, they're not really that durable. They're not well designed. They're not, the software may look nice. The hardware is shit. Every single year, there's going to be something wrong with it, whether it's no service, no audio, randomly crashing, touch not working, uh, 52 volts to the CPU, keyboard's not working. You can't open and close the thing. It's going to break it probably in one to two years, if even last that long. You don't own the device, but you know what you own when you buy an Apple product? You own your data. And with every other company, you may own the product. You may not be renting it. You may own the product. You may own the phone. You may own the laptop. You may be able to fix it when something dies on it. And it may last longer than our products, but they're going to let you, your data get mined. They're going to not respect your privacy. And while you can always buy a new Apple product, if your current one breaks, you can never get your data back from marketers once it's put into a database. You can never get your data back from a data mining company once it's in their systems. So what would you rather deal with? A device that has a decent likelihood of breaking before everybody else's or your user data being somewhere else in that Technically, they have the right to because you hit agree on some 95-page EULA before utilizing an app that you can never get them to delete that's being shared with God knows who, uh, saving and mining God knows what. And I think that Apple would have a really good sales pitch there by saying that we are the only company that is going to give a shit about privacy when it comes to this platform. And I'd love to see other companies do this as well. You know, I am patiently waiting for things like the Librem phone to come out. And I'm excited for other companies, other platforms to care about privacy in the same way that Apple does. But this is something that Apple should really get a round of applause for, even if they don't care about privacy, even if they're all full of shit here. At the very least, they are pretending ending to care about privacy. And that in and of itself is quite impressive to me in a world where companies have gotten so complacent, they don't even pretend they care about privacy anymore. Now, I got this one thought-provoking comment in my last video that I did on Tim Cook's lecture. It says, Apple Inc. is a public company. If the situation comes up that Apple can make money with their users' data and they don't, they can actually be sued by their shareholders for not making money with user data. That's capitalism. Not saying commies are good either. Uh, and they're saying, he's saying is that since publicly traded companies have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to make the most profit possible, that the shareholders could actually sue Apple if they don't make money on user data. That's the way it works. And this is probably going to go away. And I pushed back and I disagreed with that. I understand that companies are always going to try to make the most money possible. However, if you think you would make more money by being ethical in this specific area than you would by being unethical, then it would actually be profitable to be ethical. And one example that I give here is LCD screens. So when it comes to PC laptops, I may prefer PC laptops, but one thing that's bothered me uh, since the beginning of me using them is that Apple would typically put good screens in their laptops, or at least decent ones, whereas with PC laptops, you could easily spend $1,200 to $1,400 on a PC laptop, and the screen that goes in it could be complete and utter garbage. I'm not saying all companies do this. I'm just saying it's a roll of the dice when you buy a PC laptop from any company, whether or not you're getting a screen that's not going to burn your eyeballs in, like the one that came with my ThinkPad T440. Dear God, that was awful. Uh, but even my man P50, the screen that comes with it, it's 
it's 1080p, but it kind of sucks. It's, you know, it's not really easy on the eyes in contrast to screens on cheaper Apple laptops than, than that one. But they could easily make more money by putting crappier screens in their laptops. They would save, right? The reason they don't do that is because if they do that, they lose sales because aesthetics is a selling point for them. And if you start taking away the things that are selling points, you lose the customers, you lose the loyalty, and then you lose the money. So if Apple is able to make more money by having the fact that they respect privacy as a selling point, which by the way, I think is an excellent selling point, I don't think that their shareholders could say, we're going to sue you because we want you to sell user data so that we can make more money because I genuinely believe that Apple would actually make more money by getting people to decide we're going to spend $1,000 on a phone that's probably going to fail before the $179 Motorola phone fails, or I'm going to spend $4,000 on a laptop that if I'm in a human room is going to send 52 volts to the CPU. Uh, they're going to make more money off of people making those types of decisions than they are off of dealing with the pennies that they'd make in, by a contrast, selling data to advertisers. I'm kind of curious what you all think. I think that Apple's made a pretty good move here. Again, I don't know the internal workings of Apple. For all I know, this could just be them uh, virtue signaling, pretending to care about something. But from a purely profit-based perspective, I think that this is something that they're doing because they actually want to make more money. And I think that if they're able to sell their user by saying, you know, our products may not last as long. They may not be built as well, but you own your data with ours, which is something you can't say for everybody else's, that this is their attempt to make more money by doing something that is good. It just so happens that doing the ethical thing he in this specific area allows them to compete better and to be able to make more money. I'm not saying they're choosing to be ethical because they're so nice and everything, but in this area, it, it does make sense. It's pretty easy for them to you know, uh, stick to their knitting, as, as one would say, and just make devices that within an ecosystem that uh, claim to respect the user, and then put forth policies that actually respect the user. When Apple used to make mentions of caring about security or privacy in the past, I used to think they were full of shit. And one of those was about Error 53. So Error 53 is something that came up when they started adding the fingerprint scanner to the phones with the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S. So since you're able to log into the phone, to log into your Chase bank account, to log into any sort of application that required a secure password using the fingerprint, Apple set it up so that if you change the home button that had the fingerprint scanner outside of an Apple store, Touch ID would no longer work. That the Touch ID button had to be programmed and tied to the CPU itself using some sort of proprietary tool that Apple had. And fine, I'm not really going to be that mad at you for it. But what bothered me is when they started bricking phones over it. So the iPhone 6 w broke away from the iPhone 5S, whereby not only would the Touch ID not work when you replace the home button outside of an Apple store, if you updated the software on the phone, the phone would also become bricked and unusable, and it would just boot up with something called Error 53. Now, when this happened, Apple claimed that it was about security, but this was not about security. If this was about security, it would brick the phone immediately upon boot up, not when you update the software. Because if this was a concern for security, then why is it that my phone is usable with this hacked foreign home button for nine months until I run an iOS update? It was bullshit, and it came out that this was most likely some PR representative somewhere sending canned responses or trying to come up with whatever it is that it would make the reporters happy by going like, which excuse should we use for this terrible functionality? Oh, security, security, we care about security. You know, as Eli, the computer guy often says, as I agree with, PR people are typically burger flippers with college degrees, except at least the burger flipper is doing something useful, which is providing food for people, which is more than I can say for the PR person. This was, Error 53 had nothing to do with security. Error 53 was supposed to prevent phones from going on the market if the home button was not tied to the CPU during production. So if it was not tied to the CPU during production, or if there was something wrong, then the phone would be caught before it made its way to final manufacturing and to a retail store. They made it up when they claimed that it was about security. So when I see Apple claiming to care about privacy or security, I typically think they're just making it up. However, even with my cynical stance towards Apple, I don't think that they're making it up here. 
And all the actions that they've taken part in over the past two and a half years, all of the policies that they've implemented, all the ways that they've programmed and coded their software to make it more and more difficult for data to be mined by advertisers and digital marketers, I genuinely believe Apple when they say that they care about privacy and security more than the other companies do. And I think that they should be commended and applauded for putting in the effort that they have put in to keep your data from being mined. I'm kind of curious what you all think. Um, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.